All right, I'm Chris with HVACR Videos, and we're here at FieldPiece headquarters today. And we're gonna be demonstrating their JobLink wireless system. We're gonna start by uh, recovering the charge out of this unit. We have a package unit here, and we're gonna be start, we are starting using their Mr. 45 wire, uh, recovery machine. And we're also gonna be using their wireless scale with the wireless handle, the SRS3. And we've got the S-Man 480 here too, which is also part of the wireless system. We're gonna start, before we start the recovery, we've got an empty tank, we're purged all the way through. We're gonna go ahead and zero out our scale. We can zero out the scale from the wireless handle, or we can zero out the scale. We also have a weight measurement on the S-Man 480 manifold. We're gonna zero out the scale from here too. One of the features that I like about the JobLink wireless or system with the scale and the manifold is that you have the ability in, in some situations this becomes very beneficial to have a different weight on this. So say for instance if I zero out the scale on the handle, it doesn't zero out the scale on the manifold. So you can do different things with that. So that is a cool feature. So I'm going to go ahead and zero out the manifold. So now they should both be reading the same weight. Another really cool feature with the, wire, with the JobLink wireless system is the ability to see the scale on your tablet or smartphone also. So we can see our refrigerant pressures within the system because it's connected to the manifold. And at the same time, I can go ahead and hit the scale and I can see the weight that it's actually recovered into the recovery tank on the tablet also. One of the things that I really like about this is the ability to let the recovery machine run and be able to step up and walk away from the unit while it's recovering. For instance, inclement weather, if it's raining, it's perfectly safe and the Mr. 45 recovery machine can work while it's being rained on and we can actually walk indoors, under the umbrella, wherever and still see what we've recovered and or our system pressures. A really awesome feature of the SRS3 scale is that it's okay to be used outside in the rain. There's no problems with it. While it's not really meant to sit completely submerged in water, and that's simply a limitation of the scale and the way that it's put together, there has to be mechanics inside and there has to be open components, but it can handle a downpour from above, which is no problem. It can easily sit on a wet roof. There's nothing wrong with that. I need to change my batteries, dude. This thing's gonna die on us right in the middle of this. I'm sorry. Now, while I'm pulling off this battery door, let's talk about these ports. So, the S-Man 480 itself does not come with the wireless clamps, but it has the ability to be capable to be used with the wireless clamps. From the factory, it'll come with the standard uh, clamps that you plug into the back and they've actually moved the clamps to the back which is a very cool feature because if any of you have used the older manifolds while they're still great the clamps used to be plugged into the front and it wasn't very user friendly like when you would you couldn't leave them plugged in they'd kind of get in the way if you had them before you'll know what I'm talking about but the really cool feature is that they're in the back now and they have a little handle that holds them in you have an outdoor uh, temperature measurement you have a suction line temperature measurement and a liquid line temperature measurement So we're going to go ahead and continue our evacuation, turn the pump back on. Okay. Here. Okay. So we're just about ready to open up the system and start charging the refrigerant into it. I went ahead and purged my lines to make sure that there was no air, no non-condensables all the way up to my ball valve up here. 
Um, we're gonna go ahead and open these up, but what we need to do is we actually need to zero out our scale. One of the cool features is the ability to see the scale's weight measurement on the manifold itself. And notice that it says five pounds, four ounces. Well, that's not accurate because that's with me moving things around. You see, I'm moving it right now. So what I'm gonna do is once the refrigerant cylinder has stabilized out, we're gonna hit zero weight. The scale is now zeroed out. And now every bit of refrigerant that I add from this point is actually going into the system. And this is gonna be an accurate measurement. Now this system right here is looking for six pounds of refrigerant. So we're gonna put in everything that we can. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and open everything up. All right. Um, so with this, the one thing that I do like about the field piece manifold, it is, has the extra port or your process port right here. So you're not necessarily just relying like on an old conventional uh, compound gauge set where you only had two handles. This one you can actually shut off the refrigerant flow. So I do appreciate that. So now my refrigerant is on, it's sitting here waiting and we're gonna go ahead and open up the high side and push it into the system. The whole time we're tracking the weight and it's showing what we've actually added to the system and we're looking for six pounds. Now I have a feeling we're not gonna quite make it to six pounds and we're gonna have to use an extra refrigerant cylinder, but we'll be able to see it all. Another really cool feature about this manifold is, you know, we can use the wireless handle to view the scale weight while we're charging, but it is really cool to have everything consolidated on the manifold itself. I really do appreciate that feature and also having the zero weight button on the manifold itself is very cool. All right, so another of the many really cool features about the field piece manifold is the, the sight glass that's on here. So they actually changed the sight glass from the older models and made it a little bit easier to see the liquid in the system. So you're able to know whether you've got liquid as you're charging. In this situation, there's no liquid, we're just charging vapor for at the moment. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get our return air temp right here. One of the really cool features about the job link probes is they have indicators telling you which one's which. So we use red to indicate return. And then also on the back, they actually have a little dip switch that'll tell you what it is. So that way, because again, you could look at this and think which one's which. So you got your little indicator. So in this situation, we're gonna use our air probe and we're gonna get our supply air temperature. Best practices say that we install this downstream as far away for, as possible from the evaporator, but when you're working on package units, sometimes that's not practical. So we're actually gonna use a hole right here as it's going downstream. One of the cool features is the magnet that's built onto it. It helps it to stick so then you don't have to worry about it falling off. Okay. All right, so let's talk about the clamps, the job link clamps. Very interesting, what they have is they have a new technology, it's called the rapid rail technology, okay? And what it does is it actually completes the circuit once it touches a conductive surface. So we have a copper pipe here. It's important to make sure that the surface is clean, but if we have a little bit of grime on it like we do right now, all we have to do is put it on there and move the clamp back and forth a couple times and it's perfectly safe and it actually helps to clean the surface. If that doesn't do it, then you're gonna to wanna to take some sand cloth or something and really shine it up. Another cool feature that they have, you notice here, when I disconnect, we have an audible tone saying we do not have connection anymore. And then once I make the connection, we have an audible tone that says we're connected. Really cool feature on these is that they're not affected by ambient temperature because of the rapid rail technology and they have instantaneous temperature readings that you usually see in a couple seconds. So we're still charging the system, but now we have all the wireless tools hooked up and I can scroll through and show everything that we have going on. So we have our outdoor dry bulb indicated by this thermocouple. We have our suction line temperature, our liquid line temperature. And then if I hit this air button right here, we can scroll through and see our dry bulb temperatures return and supply while we still see our subcoin and superheat. We can see our wet bulb temperatures, our dew point, relative humidity, enthalpy, 
We can do some calculations, see a delta T, return minus supply, or we can simply go back to the normal superheat and subcooling mode. Now, I like to see the air mode, so that way I can see the air temperature difference. So, our return and supply air temperature differences right now. Now, it is very cold outside. We have a very cold ambient today, so we are gonna run awfully low pressures. So, we're gonna go ahead and finish charging this system now. So, this isn't something that is really recommended by Field Piece. There's nothing wrong with it, but this is something really cool that you can do with the probes. If you wanna go completely without a manifold, you can connect the probes with a charging tee, and we can actually charge using the job link probes. So you see, I've got the high side probe hooked up, I've got the low side probe hooked up, I've got a ball valve right here, and I've got my refrigerant tank hooked up, and I've already purged it, but we'll do it again. We purged our line, and now we can actually add refrigerant with the charging tee, and we can continue to see our scale. So that's how much refrigerant we put in the system already, and we can go ahead and add more refrigerant, and we can watch the number change as we're adding refrigerant to the system. I was getting ready to switch over to a new tank of refrigerant to finish charging this unit, and I just thought this was a great opportunity to give you guys a shot of how the Joblink system could benefit you. With the ability to have the wireless temperature clamps inside the unit showing our dry bulb, our uh, dry bulb return air, dry bulb supply air, our real time superheat, sub cooling, I can actually diagnose this unit because I know it's already low on charge, but it's very obvious right here with the high superheat, the low sub cooling, the low suction pressure, and the low head pressure. Look at our saturation temperature. Based off of our outdoor ambient temperature of 71 degrees, we are low on charge right now. And so we're going to finish charging this unit, but I just thought this was a great way to show that. All right, so we're now continuing our charging with the Joblink wireless system. Again, we're trying to get to six, uh, six pounds, and you can see that we can see everything wirelessly on the tablet. And again, you know, if we needed to step away for a minute, we could go inside and still have connection and let it charge, and then we would know when we got to our number. All right, so to summarize today, what we did was we pulled a recovery with the recovery machine, went ahead and removed the refrigerant from the system. Then after that, we went ahead and evacuated the system using the vacuum pump. We then proceeded to charge the system in two different ways, showing the capabilities of the field piece wireless job link system using the S-MAN 480 manifold and using the job link probes. I also showed you my little perspective of using the job link probes to save time and energy and go ahead and charge with those without having to bring the manifold onto the roof. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. Again, I'm Chris with HVACR Videos and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys on the next one.